Okay. So uh, I've just been in the Life 113 tutorial uh, for week three. And a number of you have said um, we've got a problem in 107, um, which involves fitting data to a straight line. Okay. Now, we don't teach that to you in 113 until next week, week four. You're going to do linear equations and you're going to work with linear data sets next week, which is a bit unfair because uh, we're expecting you to do that in 107 and we haven't shown you how to do that. So there's a bit of a, a, bit of a, a discontinuity in the way we're teaching between modules, so forgive us for that. It's not always perfect. That's why I'm making this video now is so we can address it before your deadline on Fridays. So I'm sure some of you already figured this out, but let's go and take a look. So as I understand it, so I'm, I, I don't really get involved in the labs because I'm, I'm a menace to society, right? I just teach the maths, but you've been measuring snails, is that right? So let me share my desktop. Um, here we go. And you've got a data set that depending on which group you're in, um, you have your own data set, but I've got a data set that looks a bit like this. Let me just check we're actually sharing that data, yes. So um, you've measured the heights um, or, the, or the lengths of these snails and you've measured their weights, okay? And you've said or you've been told that there is actually a linear relationship between the, the length cubed for a snail. So what, what you're saying, you can measure a snail and um, you can approximate its volume um, according to a cube. So if you measure its length, you can say, right, if we do that value cubed, that volume will be directly proportional to its mass. And if I plot, so, yeah, so I make that calculation, that's easy, I can just go um, equals um, this, a, this cell A2 to the power three. Okay, that's a little tilde size three. Enter that, copy it down, you get your values. And now I'm going to plot these. I'm going to make a plot of this. The LQ is going to go on the x-axis, and the mass of the snail, as, as we've measured it, is going to go on the y-axis. Okay. So how do I do that? Insert, and then I'm going to do scatter plot. There you go. That simple. We've made that a bit bigger. Let's make that nice and big, right? Okay. Um, a few things I want to do here. Uh, let's add some axis titles. This obviously is the uh, length cubed, millimeters cubed, the x axis, and a good size. And then this is going to be the mass in grams. And that is going to be. Well, give it a sensible title. Um, ooh, relationship between L cubes and mass in grams of, I don't know what species they are, but maybe put the species in. Else, right? Um, let's make that nice and big as well. Right, so we've got everything here except the trend line now. And that is really, really easy to do in Excel. So if I double click the data, um, actually, if I do it like this, box, you can see I've got a little plus sign here. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go right the way down the bottom to trend line. As I do it, a little line pops up. That's great. So let's put that on there. Um, what I've got here is a fit. A straight line fit to my data, um, which is great. But what do I mean by that exactly? Well, next week I'm going to show you that I can represent that relationship using an equation. I've already been cheeky and written it down here. Let's make that big so you can see it. Right? The equation of a straight line, any straight line, um, with respect to the y and the x axis, is y equals mx plus c. Right? You should. That should at least ring some bells for you, okay? Um, y, obviously, is the mass. We measured it in this case. X is the length cubed. M is the gradient of this line, okay? <clears throat> which, which is essentially it's just, it's the slope of the line. 
Um, and C is the point at which this line is going to hit that y-axis. In this case, it's going to be between 3 and 4, maybe 3.5, okay? How do I figure out what those values are um, using Excel? Well, again, if you hover over, if you click on the graph, hover over the plus sign, go back down to the thread line, and the little arrow here, click that, and in more options, do display equation on the chart. There you go. And this is the equation in the form of that y equals mx plus c. Now, I'm going to make that bigger. There you go. Right, so your gradient is 0 0.0001, okay? It's only got one significant figure in it, right? Which is probably about right, because there's quite a wide spread of data here. And that's probably the best you can determine the gradient to, okay? Um, now, be mindful of the units. Your gradient is determined as the ratio of your y's to your x's. So your units are going to be grams over meters cubed. So the units for the gradient are grams per meters cubed. The, unit, the, the units for the, um, the intercepts, well, it's cutting the y-axis, so it's units of grams. So when you express these values, make sure you put the units in as well. So it's going to be 0 0.001 0 .0 grams per meters cubed for the, the gradient and 3.4661 for the x intercept or the y, sorry, the y intercept. Okay. And there you go. And from that, if I if you then go and measure a snail and you determine its height or its length or whatever, um, you can calculate its volume very roughly. Um, and then you can also use this relationship to give an estimate for the the mass in grams. Okay. Um, and I think that's all you need for the lab. I hope that helps. Um, yeah. Any problems, let me know.